When I turned 18 years old, I chose not to go to college because I started my first business and I felt like I disappointed my mom and it was a very rebellious time in my life. And that point in my life when I turned 18 was the most amount of pressure for me. It is when I started to apply an intense pressure on myself to be great. In week nine, Julia mentioned something. We were talking about fear and she was talking about how most creatives and artists, when they choose to be artists, most of the time they're rebelling against their parents or their parents make them feel as if they're rebelling. Um, or you choosing to be an artist is going against your parents' good wishes. And I don't know if that was necessary. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know if that was necessarily the full scope of my situation, but I can say that me deliberately choosing not to go to college put in a, a, a really big pressure on my shoulders to feel like I had to be great to justify breaking my mom's heart or disappointing her. I couldn't just be a businesswoman. I had to be a great businesswoman to justify why I did what I did because one day my mom will understand and even being a, a an artist or a creative or a content creator or whatever the fuck I am I feel guilty about being this way because I feel like it's this like rebellious action and if I'm not a great artist I um have no it was it wasn't worth it if I'm not a great artist and to put pressure on myself, I learned to be a great artist makes it hard for me to just be an artist. When you put pressure on yourself to make great work, sometimes you don't even end up making any work. So it's just like trying to write a hit song. Anyway, um, yeah, so we were talking about fear and talking about how most artists and blocks creatives are not lazy they're afraid um and yeah that was I guess huge for me to unveil and really think about I have to meditate on it more but I was just thinking like wow so that's what it is okay anyway um we talked about enthusiasm and some other shit but I don't want to really talk about those things she, there was this really powerful exercise that Julia did this week that I just finished that I think I'm going to use a lot for various projects that I have. She was saying that in order to work freely on a project, an artist must be functionally free of resentment and resistance. Any buried barriers must be aired before the work can proceed. And she said, ask yourself a few simple questions before going into any projects. And I just want whoever's watching this to just think about a certain project that you're working on or want to work on and ask yourself these questions. First, list any resentments or anger that you have in connection with this project. And for my project, my project that I'm working on right now is my mixtape. I'm working on a couple of projects at the same time, but the one that's closest near is my mixtape, right? And I listed out the resentments and anger I had connected with my project, which is one, I resent my audience for demanding anything of me, period, point blank. I've always hated that. It is what it is. I resent I resent these motherfuckers for demanding any fucking thing. Two, I resent waiting this long to drop a project. And then I wrote, I resent my ex, but he has nothing to do with this. I don't know why I just, I, I don't know. It is what it is. The second question, ask your artist to list any and all fears about the projected piece of work or anyone connected to it. List out all your fears about the goddamn project. And I listed out some fears and came up with some conclusions. One, 
I'm afraid that my sound will be outdated. Two, I'm afraid that my ideas are corny. Three, I'm afraid people will talk negatively about me behind my back. That's a big one. Four, I'm afraid that I won't finish. Five, I'm afraid it'll, it'll get, uh, I'm afraid it'll actually attract a lot of attention and be treated like garbage. Another big one. And the last one, I'm afraid that I'll like it now and hate it later. I realized something the other day when I was on the subway. I never thought I was afraid of success, but I think I am. It's really not failure that I'm afraid of as much as it is success. And I say this because I've watched my favorite artists. I'm an early adapter. That's a business term. It's basically like the people who, like I knew about Megan the Stallion before everybody knew about Megan the Stallion. I knew about Princess Nokia before everybody knew about Princess Nokia. I knew about a lot of different artists before anybody knew about these artists. Rico Nasty, I was with Rico Nasty when she wasn't even like dropped before I Carly, I knew about Rico. Anyway, I have watched a lot of my favorite artists grow and the bigger you get and the more people that you reach, it's almost like fucking wholesale, it feels like. Like uh, the less products you have, the more expensive. And the more products you have or the mass amount of products that you sell or produce, the cheaper it gets. And I'm relating this to not quality, but audience, right? I have the fear that I'm going to get so successful to the point where people start treating my art like garbage just for clout. I watch people tear my favorite artist's greatest work to shreds and treat it like garbage. And my art is so intimate to me and means so much to me. And I'm a genuine ass person and I'm genuinely so emotionally connected to my art and not just my art, other people's art. I know how much these people cherish their stuff. And when you get to that level of success, people treat it like shit. Like it's just nothing. And so I realized that I haven't put out a project yet because I don't think I'm ready for criticism. And not only am I not ready, I'm not ready for the trash criticism. I can handle the actual criticism that's productive, that gives me aha moments. But I'm not, I don't think I'm emotionally ready for the criticism and the trolling and this and the that. And to be honest, I had to stop myself even when I was thinking about this on the subway because I was like, you're not even there yet. You're not even there yet. And it's fine that I feel this way. I'm allowing myself to be afraid. I'm I don't I'm fine with talking about these things. I need to because it's a block that I want to get through. I've realized that my life is constantly going to be a series of meeting resistance and getting through things. And um What was I about to divert to? I forgot what I was going to say next. But the point is, I think that I'm a little bit more afraid to succeed than I am to fall or fail because I feel like I don't want to climb all the way up to the top and it's a long ass fall from the top. If I stay at the bottom, what, you know, but the higher you go, the higher that fall is. And I think that's what really scares me. And I think that's what really scares a lot of people, too. But um, I realized something before I started filming this that. A couple of years ago I made a vlog and I was talking to my audience about how I was afraid to get in a studio and make a song and I had the same fear back then and it was because it'll be played over and over and what are people gonna say about this and what are people gonna think and what if they talk about me ah you know cuz I don't know I feel like I make myself <laughs> it's ironic it really is ironic and satirical because in this egotistical way, in my mind, I'm like already there. I'm like big. And I, I just think that people are like talking about me. 
and then I come back to reality. I'm like, bitch, nobody's talking about your ass. <laughs> Nobody's fucking talking about you, bitch. Like, so relax and just, I can just do you. You know what I'm saying? But the same fear that I had back then, I got over that. And I've been in the studio multiple times. I'm now recording. Back then, I wasn't recording myself. I wasn't, I wasn't doing, I was scared just to step in the booth. And years later, now I'm, over that fear and I've encountered another fear which is I'm afraid to create or finish a project because I'm afraid of what might happen after I finish it not that I'm incapable of finishing a project all these goddamn songs that I have sitting around project is goddamn done just drop the project but I want to get past this fear and then go on about my life and drop a couple of projects and maybe I'll encounter another fear. I don't know, but bitch, I'm excited to knock these hoes down. I know that. So that's what week nine was. God, and on a side note, it was so much. It was so much this week. I felt so out of it. I've been drinking way too much. Like, ah, I'm trying to get a grip and I'm just not. I think at this point I might just go with the flow because I've been trying to get a grip or like a for some type of discipline, which actually we were talking about in um in one of the chapters, we were talking about enthusiasm versus discipline. I used to be really, really hard on myself, very disciplined, and so disciplined to the point where I wouldn't allow creative creativity to flow through because I wanted to be disciplined. Um, and I was being so militant about it that I wasn't allowing myself to be creative. And, um, you know, no, no new information, but Julia said something that kind of reminded me that creativity is, it comes from enthusiasm more than it does discipline. So you can be disciplined all day and like glorify all your favorites who, you know, are super disciplined and all this other shit, but really it's play that gets you to that point. It's enthusiasm, it's joy, it's genuinely being happy and invested in your projects and excited about them and passionate about them. And you're supposed to have fun. So... Like, this whole week, I didn't work. You know, whatever. I just was in the room, making music, going with the flow, being non-judgmental towards myself, trying things, which is a big step for me. Because, like I said, usually making music is a... I feel like I'm beating myself up constantly. It's constantly insulting. It's intense anxiety. It's really intense. Very critical just not fun all the time and lately I've been making music that's fun I'm embracing the imperfections I haven't been running from things that aren't perfect honestly I've been embracing the fuck out of them so I'm really excited for this project because not only is it super honest it's very me and it's full of imperfections which is feels good because there's passion there's passion in my errors and I want to start embracing them more. And I said that last time. So that's what I've been practicing this whole week is embracing the errors. And it feels really good and really freeing because I don't give a fuck. Because it feels good. And it's true. So, yeah, that was this week. I'm going to be on week 10 and then week fucking 12. Like, it's been really hard to kind of keep up with the weeks. I've been doing my assignments real late. Um, but, and, you know... I need to get back on my morning pages and shit. Not that I've fallen off. Like, I've, I've been doing them, you know. The pages are still full. I'm still writing. But, um, yeah. I'm excited for week 10, and then I'll be done with this book. And I'm going to do a whole, like, summary on my creative recovery synopsis, I guess. I got some new equipment, which is exciting, too. So I'm ready to get back into my creative mode and, like, start creating cool content on YouTube and trying things so it's about to get real messy and real playful for me and i'm excited about that summer is coming up it's gonna be insane i'm proud of you jayla you're doing good i really am i am proud of myself it's coming along i feel it